Hi there. If you've been a Seventh-day Adventist for any length of time, you may have noticed that the phrase spirit of prophecy is commonly used to refer to the writings of Ellen White. But what we're going to do here in this video is we're going to take a look at a few statements from Ellen White that make it quite clear that she herself could not have been using the term spirit of prophecy to refer to her writings. Now, this doesn't in any way diminish the importance of Ellen White's writings. We're simply looking at how she used this phrase, spirit of prophecy. So our goal here isn't necessarily to explain exactly what the spirit of prophecy is. We do have other videos on this channel for that, and we're going to link them right down below. But in this video, we're going to do something very specific. We're simply looking to show that Ellen White herself did not use a phrase, spirit of prophecy, as referring to her writings. That said, let's take a look at the first statement. So here in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, Ellen White says, I would call a special attention to the remarkable dreams given in this little work, all with harmony and distinctness, illustrating the same things. The multitude of dreams arise from the common things of life, with which the Spirit of God has nothing to do. There are also false dreams, as well as false visions, which are inspired by the spirit of Satan. But dreams from the Lord are classed in the word of God with visions, and are as truly the fruits of the spirit of prophecy as visions. Such dreams, taking into the account the persons who have them, and the circumstances under which they are given, contain their own proofs of their genuineness. So, here Ellen saying, some dreams are inspired by God, some are inspired by Satan, and some are just kind of neutral. They're, you know, arising from the common things of life. But the point here to notice is that she's saying dreams from the Lord, along with visions, these are fruits of the spirit of prophecy. Now you're probably able to see that in this statement, Ellen White could not be referring to her writings when she says the spirit of prophecy. But in case it's not obvious, let's just do this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to swap out the two phrases. So we're going to take spirit of prophecy and we're going to switch it to say Ellen White's writings. And now once we do that, it's really undeniable that this is simply not what she meant. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do this with each of the quotes as we go through them, just to make the distinction really obvious. And actually, since we'll be going through Ellen's own writings and quotes, I think we could simply just say my writing, since that's how it would have been worded if it were to be coming straight from Ellen White herself. So let's just do this one more time. If we read this sentence again, and we, after the swap, it would say, but dreams from the Lord are classed in the word of God with visions and are as truly the fruits of my writings as visions. And clearly this is not what she meant. Though she's saying that the spirit of prophecy has a part in these dreams and visions, the spirit of prophecy is simply not her writings. So, all right, let's move on to the next one. So here she says, had Christ come to this world with the outward display, the power and the rank that he might have had, his object would not have been accomplished. The spirit of prophecy clearly indicated that an inspired teacher was to appear. Peter declared, Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these things. All right, so let's take a look at this. Notice Ellen here is quoting Peter, who's referring all the way back to Moses, back to when the spirit of prophecy indicated to Moses that a prophet would be raised up, and that being the inspired teacher Christ. So clearly, it couldn't possibly be that she meant her writings when Ellen's referring to the spirit of prophecy, indicating to Moses that an inspired teacher was to appear. So if we switch this out, it becomes even more obvious. Her writings were simply not around at the time of Moses. 
so yes, it's a fact that she's saying that the spirit of prophecy is what indicated that an inspired teacher or Christ would appear, but the spirit of prophecy was most definitely not her writings. All right, let's take a look at another. Here she says, Jacob was an affectionate father. He had no resentful feelings toward his sorrowing children. He had forgiven them. He loved them to the last. But God, by the spirit of prophecy, elevated the mind of Jacob above his natural feelings. In his last hours, angels were all around him, and the power of God rested upon him. His paternal feelings would have led him to utter in his dying testimony only expressions of love and tenderness. But under the influence of inspiration, he uttered truth, although painful. So here we have Jacob having his mind elevated by the spirit of prophecy. Again, now this took place long before Ellen White's writings ever existed. It's very clear God was not using her writings to elevate the mind of Jacob. I mean, we can plainly see God use the spirit of prophecy as a means by which to aid Jacob. But the real point we're making here is that Ellen White did not understand this means to be her writings. She was portraying the spirit of prophecy as something that is clearly not her writings. So moving on, this next one is very short and to the point. Uh, this one comes from Acts of the Apostles. And Ellen says, Silas, Paul's companion in labor, was a tried worker gifted with the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so there's really not a whole lot to be said here. The fact is, is that whatever she meant by the spirit of prophecy, she simply couldn't have been referring to her writings. Okay, on to the next. Okay, so for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and summarize this first paragraph here and, and feel free to pause at this point if you would just like to read it through for yourself. But here in this first paragraph, Desire of Ages, page 55, Ellen is writing about the time when Jesus was being brought to the temple for dedication. So Simeon sees Joseph and Mary with Jesus, and he recognizes that this is the Messiah. This is the one he's been longing to see. So Simeon takes the infant savior and as Simeon lifts him toward heaven, he basically says, I can die a happy man now that I've seen the Messiah. And then in the next paragraph, that first line there, it reads, the spirit of prophecy was upon this man of God. And while Joseph and Mary stood by wondering at his words, he blessed them. And you can read on from there, you know, if you'd like. But the thing to look at here is if we take a closer look at this phrase, spirit of prophecy, Again, we're going to clearly see Ellen is not referring to her writings. And I'm sure this is becoming so plainly obvious, but just for the sake of showing how obvious it truly is, her writings were just simply not around at the time that the infant savior was being dedicated. I mean, this was taking place at least 1800 years too early for her writings. Okay, I'm going to go through one more with you guys. And in this last one, Ellen White says, the Lord opened more fully to Enoch, the plan of salvation, and by the spirit of prophecy carried him down through the generations, which should live after the flood and showed him the great events connected with the second coming of Christ and the end of the world. Enoch faithfully rehearsed to the people all that God had revealed to him by the spirit of prophecy. So what do you think? I mean, there's really not a whole lot to say here, except that if we really just look at this logically, putting aside whatever idea or ideas that we may currently hold, just set those aside for a minute and just read her statement here as it reads. There's no denying that Ellen White is not referring to her writings when she's speaking of the spirit of prophecy. So just to sum it all up, we can see from each one of these statements that we've gone through that whatever the spirit of prophecy is, Ellen White did not have in mind that it was her writings. And we can really see that because of the way that she's spoken about the spirit of prophecy. We can see that it goes way back in history before the time of her writings. And it's just clear to see that she could not be referring to her writings. And here's the other thing. It's not only Ellen that we find this to be the case with. 
We've got another video here uh, on this channel in this playlist that goes specifically through statements from her husband, James. And I won't tell you the outcome, but I definitely encourage you to go watch it for yourself. I think you'll find the evidence is overwhelming. But in conclusion, if we can clearly see that Ellen White was not referring to her writings when she uses the phrase spirit of prophecy, I think the question we can ask ourselves is how should we be using that phrase? What exactly is the spirit of prophecy that she's talking about? And this is the fun part. We've got lots to learn. And like I mentioned earlier, we've got other videos linked below that will help. So be sure to check out the playlist spirit of prophecy to find out more. And also if you're enjoying the content here and would like to see more of it, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell if you want to get the notifications each time we release new content. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.